The Saints offense looked the best it's looked probably all season against the Giants. On today's episode of the Who Dats Pod, we're going to be looking at some of the film and kind of how the Saints were able to make the offense look good and kind of how Demario Davis single-handedly stops Saquon Barkley in the Giants rushing offense. We're going to dive into all that on today's episode of the Who Dats Pod. Let's dive into it. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Who Dots Pod. I'm Caden Janish, your host. Make sure while you're here, you hit that subscribe button. Check me out on social medias if you haven't already. Links are in the description, okay? These are my favorite of the week, and based off of the audience, these are your favorite of the week as well. So we're going to be looking at the Saints and Giants film. And before we dive into any of that, I am not an NFL analyst or any film guru. I'm not criticizing or trying to shit on anyone. I'm simply just showing good plays and bad plays, breaking them down because I have basic football knowledge and showing them to an audience. I'm not trying to say I could do better because I can't. I'd take one hit and be out for the year. Um, Some notes I took away from this game, Pete Carmichael called a really good game using quite a bit of play action, used quite a bit of motion. I thought Derek Carr, something he did very well in this game that he hasn't been able to do all season is just throw the anticipation lead guys into a spot as opposed to throwing it to where they are if that makes sense he did a good job of just kind of leading guys offensive line played outstanding landon young i believe gave up one pressure by my count one ish if that landon young played a really good game offensive line as a whole just played really good and someone pointed out that this is probably what he looked like in training camp because he wasn't pressured and in training camp you're not under pressure so in training camp he looked really good from all the reports all the um information that was being put out there Derek Carr looked really good because he wasn't under pressure this game he wasn't under pressure so this is the guy that probably everyone saw during training camp this is the guy that just looked and had everyone believing that this is going to be a very special season and during training camp him and Juwan him and the tight ends had a really big connection and in this game him and the tight ends had quite a bit of connection getting four all four tight ends involved, Jimmy Graham, Taysom Hill, Juwan, and Foster Moreau. Some other notes that I took kind of watching the film, Demario Davis is good at football, just uh, no. Demario Davis is great at football. He is an exceptional player. Zach Bond has been quite a very good kind of late season addition to the team he's not very good at stopping the run but on those third and long or passing situations he's done an excellent job just creating pressure forcing throws getting to the quarterback very quick i thought brian Brzee also had a pretty solid game as well now the defensive line did have a good game but i don't think that was them having a good game i do think that was just the giants offense being (laughs) that bad And when I was watching this film, I didn't really see any throws. Like there was obviously a few that Derek Carr missed. And I was like, maybe he should have thrown this or that. And we have a few of those in here. But overall, I thought he probably played his best game as a Saint. He made basically every read and every throw that needed to be made. I didn't think like, how did he miss this one? Why didn't he throw that one? There are a few that's like, okay, maybe he should have thrown it elsewhere or to this guy instead of there. But overall, I thought this was probably Derek Carr's best game in terms of just he didn't miss any big reads, anything like that. He hit the guys in the right spot. The timing was down. He completed slants, which he hasn't been able to really do all season. So I thought he played his best game as a Saint. Now the Saints are 7-7 seven seven heading into LA. And on tomorrow's episode, we're going to be diving into the preview and kind of looking at just how does that game look for the Saints. Okay, now that we have all of that out of the way, let's dive into all of the film. This opening play, here we have, I believe this is the Giants' opening drive. You're going to get Wandale Robinson going in motion, and then he's going to kind of run a wheel. You're going to get this guy. I think this is Hyatt. He's going to run across. You're going to have this guy kind of run a crossing route. You're going to get play action, have the running back go this way, and then Waller kind of go that way. Basically, everything's set up to get there and Waller the football. And Paulson Adebo is following Wandale Robinson. Showing that it is a man coverage, so he is on him. Alante is on Sleeton from the looks of it. Adebo is on Juan Dale. So this play is basically designed to get the linebackers to get in a mismatch. Chances are Demario Davis is supposed to be on this guy. Him going this way, it's Demario going that way. Warner has to go this way following Darren Waller if that is the coverage. 
So why don't we get to right before the ball is snapped. So right here, nothing's changed. This guy's still going this way. But the read is to get the ball probably to Darren Waller, get these linebackers to crisscross, or get Pete Warner to go this way and Demario to follow the running back thinking he's they're supposed to switch. And the Saints linebackers do an excellent job here of switching. So instead of Demario following running back and Warner following Waller, they just switch and Demario Davis comes up here and Pete Warner takes out the running back. And they do an excellent job of switching. And there's nothing really open downfield either with the secondary. So this play is designed to get the ball to Darren Waller. And Demario Davis was just on it from the from the start of the game. And you're going to see on the next play, he makes... <laughs> the very next play we're going to be looking at is Demario Davis making a tackle like at the line of scrimmage. As you can see, Demario Davis just... He sees Waller coming this way. Warner has his eyes in the backfield watching the running back. And now he is on the running back. Demario sees this play action and comes up just in case DeVito was going to run or DeVito, this is a design like bootleg or whatever it may be. Demario is now on Waller and he makes an excellent play because he's an excellent football player. Demario Davis makes this play, but Kyle Phillips right here plays a huge part of it. So what are you going to get from the offensive line? So you're going to go like this. They're going to try and double team Phillips, but he goes inside. They're just going to try and double team him, and then one of the blockers is supposed to get off and end up blocking Demario Davis. They're all just kind of down blocking. Now, as you're going to see, Demario Davis is going to read these blockers, and with Kyle Phillips going inside and attacking the inside of these linemen, it opens up a gap for Demario Davis to shoot through. But it also doesn't allow the lineman to get off the double team and get to Demario Davis to prevent him from getting there. So Kyle Phillips, Demario got the tackle, but Kyle Phillips deserves credit on this play. As you can see, him going inside now makes this blocker mess up his assignment because now he's trying to double team because the center is supposed to get up to Demario Davis. Now there is a gap right here for Demario Davis to shoot through. The running back is supposed to shoot through that gap as well. Demario Davis just meets him at the line. And once again, Demario Davis was just all over it on this game. You can see Kyle Phillips right here. He gets inside of this left guard, which screws up the whole process of this guy getting to Phillips, getting off the double team, and then getting to Demario Davis. Now everything's messed up, creating a hole in the gap for Demario Davis to shoot through. And he just makes an excellent play and an excellent tackle. This was a nice blitz drop from Dennis Allen. You're going to get a corner blitz from Paulson Adiba, which is pretty rare. You're going to get these guys kind of blitzing. Demario Davis is going to stall for a second and then attack the open lane and ultimately get the sack. And the secondary in the back end, even with Paulson Adiba blitzing, they were able to get to him. And the coverage was still on top and really good. So... Here we go. Nathan Shepard came in really hot, got pressure, forced Tommy DeVito to go in this way, which is exactly where Demario Davis is going through, and you don't want to be going towards Demario Davis. Let's be real. And Demario Davis just got the sack, and coverage-wise, there's nothing really for him to throw to. He doesn't have enough time anyway. It seems like they're trying to get this guy coming across, this guy going like that, like a Yankee concept. The only option he probably could have thrown to is this guy, and Isaac Yadam, um, seems like he would have been there for the tackle. If we look at the other angle, you can kind of really see Nathan Shepard just shoot through the gap. Forced Tommy DeVito, here's Nathan Shepard. He's just going to attack this slant right here. He's going to attack the inside shoulder. Nice move. Forces him to Mario Davis is there to clean it up. Nice play, kind of design. Good coverage from the Giants, but this is a really good throw by... Derek Carr throwing with anticipation and throwing to a spot for Juwan Johnson. You get Taysom Hill in motion. He's going to run that. AT Perry's going to kind of run a seam. And you get Juwan Johnson right here. He's just going to kind of run an out corner ish route. And these routes, if this is zone, these routes are to clear um, space for Juwan Johnson. And if it's man coverage, you just have to kind of make the right read. And that's what Derek Carr does on this play. You get motion play action two things that Pete Carmichael hasn't done too much of this season and he's done quite a bit of it over the past few weeks very good protection 
you get man coverage so now you throw to a spot this is kind of where you want to be throwing the football you want to lead you on to about somewhere in this area Derek Carr does exactly that and does a really nice pass and Juwan Johnson makes a really nice catch when we look at the other angle and just kind of look at the protection as well you can see the catch better too from this angle here's Landon Young definitely had some help from Max Garcia in the jumbo package Andres Pete got beat um, but Derek Carr got it up before he could really feel any pressure makes a really nice pass to Juwan Johnson Juwan makes a really nice catch I like this play design from Pete Carmichael right here because if it's main coverage, you have Rashid Shahid right here who's going to kind of run a reverse whip, if that makes sense. We're going to get A.T. Perry running an out route. We get Juwan on an out route. And Lynn Bowden is running a crosser over the middle. Because if this is main coverage, Rashid Shahid is probably your guy. If it's zone coverage, chances are middle of the field is where you are attacking, and that's exactly what happens here. Derek Carr is going to snap the football. Again, clean pocket. Huge reason why he had a lot of success against the Giants. Rashid Shahid's here. If this is main coverage, um, I think this would probably be more open with more openness in the middle of the field. But Derek Carr makes a really nice throw again throwing to a spot and leading guys and throwing with anticipation as opposed to just throwing to a guy who's open and throwing to where the guy's at as opposed to where he's supposed to be and lynn bowden also makes an excellent catch and the saints were able to get a first down right here here's the other angle that you can really see how excellent this catch really was juan johnson with the chip route i believe on cave on thibodeau thibodeau the car just delivers a really nice pass Third and goal. The red zone offense has been significantly better over the past three weeks. However, they have played three of the some of the worst red zone defenses. But they've gone 9 of 10 in their last 10 red zone trips, which goes back all the way to the Lions game. You're going to get Jimmy Graham on that route. Shahid's going to run a corner. Kirkwood is going to run a drag. Taysom Hill is going to kind of run like a crossing and sit. And Jamal Williams is going to end up sitting right here. You get zone coverage. The Giants are, are in zone. You get good protection. Carr has time. I don't know how he fits this pass through this window. But it is an excellent throw because there really also isn't too much to go to anywhere else. You got Jimmy Graham down here. But I don't know. This is just a hard throw to make. You got Shahid up here. If you throw it like maybe to there, it's a play made. But this is just a great throw from Derek Carr into a tight window and keith kirkwood makes an excellent play and i'm we're a little bit lucky that Taysom hill you know didn't try and go for the ball as well because he could have easily thought oh that pass is going to me but Taysom hill also does that route is also to help clear out those linebackers so maybe he knew it wasn't going to him again again another demario davis play you're going to get this guy in motion kind of a counter play Looks like one of these guys is supposed to down block Demario Davis. Pete Warner takes out the guard or one of the interior guys. And Demario Davis shoots the gap, attacks the inside shoulder of the tackle, I believe. And attacks the inside shoulder, which allows him to get space. And then just makes a play in the backfield because he's just that good at football. Yeah. Excellent player. Excellent. Demario Davis might have been one of the best players on the... He probably was the best player on the field. Here's the other angle of it. You can see him attack the inside shoulder of this pulling guard, which allows him to make that play. If he doesn't attack the inside shoulder, he's not making that play. So again, Demario Davis is just an excellent football player who has just so much football smarts. He's just such an outstanding player. This is an excellent job from the Saints defense right here. You're going to get this guy in motion, and they're going to kind of fake a screen right here, and then this guy's going to end up running a wheel he's going to go up there Alante Taylor is going to follow Yitam ends up taking the guy in motion downfield and Alante Taylor stays and ends up making an excellent tackle right there just an excellent job of communication and an excellent job of just knowing your assignments and knowing what the Giants are doing as you can see if this is a screen he's going for the block and now he has this guy this guy's pretending to block he's going to end up running a route nothing there you could argue you can make this throw if he leads him this safety's coming across to maybe make a play and Alante Taylor just comes up and makes a tackle on Wando Robinson who is a guy who 
makes a lot of guys miss tackles. So props to Alante Taylor. He in that secondary just had an excellent game. We got our first sack of the film breakdown. Alante Taylor is going to come on a blitz. He doesn't get there. And the Saints are going to kind of stun a little bit. And why don't we just play and just kind of break it down. You got three guys rushing over here. Tano Passanio looks like is going to stun across. This guy is watching Demario Davis because why would you not? <laughs> Alante Taylor is blitzing, but there's not really an area for him to find a lane. He comes inside. You get the stunt. Brian Brzee comes through on his side, and he's able to get the sack. We'll be able to see better from it on the other angle. The Saints doing this stunt confuses the blocker. So they're blocking Brzee. He's coming in and crashing down. Tano's coming across. One of these guys loses communication. Brzee's able to come through and get the sack. So if you, why don't we play it? So double teaming. This guy sees Tano Passanio coming across. So he's going to get off of Brzee to block Tano Passanio. But the left guard doesn't know that he's going to get off of Brian Brzee. Doesn't He's not able to sustain his, sustain his block, and Brian Brzee, the rookie, gets his sack. This was an excellent play call for Pete Carmichael. I don't know if he's starting to start calling plays based off of coverages, but you're going to get Shahid on a curl, A.T. Perry on a curl. If this is zone, one of these is going to be open because this guy, these three guys cannot cover the, that spot for that long of a time if it's man coverage and you throw it with anticipation you're probably hitting at perry due to his size but given it is zone shahid is probably the better answer you get play action good job great blitz pickup from jamal williams and look at all of this open space harder throw to make to at perry here excellent throw throws with anticipation anticipation to rashid Shahid, why don't we look at Jamal Williams' blitz pickup on this play because it is excellent. Pass protection was good on this play as well. Here's Jamal Williams. Play action, boom. Immediate pass protection. Excellent job from Jamal Williams. All right, so this is our first oh, This is our first negative-ish play that we have from Derek Carr and the Saints. Um, they got lucky here. You're going to get Juwan Johnson running like that. You're going to get Shahid running it out. It looks like Bowden just runs a streak, and I believe this guy is just running a crossing route. The Saint Jamal Williams, nice blitz pickup again on this play. He throws it to Jawan Johnson. I didn't think this was a flag, but Shahid is the guy that he misses who he probably sh should have thrown it to if he throws it with anticipation because he was pretty open. And why don't we just play it? Giants send a blitz. Carr has a decent amount of time. If he just throws it to Rashid Shahid, if he throws it, over here at the same time it might be a catch i'm not mad at this read but i think they got away with it because i didn't i don't think there was really too much holding on this play this is third down in about seven ish and if you look this is what i'm talking about this is where he probably should have thrown it if he throws with anticipation as opposed to juan johnson i'm not mad at this throw but it's a little more frustrating when you have like this guy all the way open, if that makes sense. I might be just nitpicking. I don't, I don't know, but I just thought maybe he should have thrown to Rashid Shahid uh, with anticipation on that play because he did. That's something he did well in this game. Um, here's the other angle of it. I didn't really see a holding penalty on that play, but um, that's just my opinion. This is an excellent, excellent, excellent job from Pete Carmichael. Camara in motion just to the other side, and then you're gonna fake. The bubble screen to Alvin Kamara. You get man coverage kind of in a blitz. You get Rashid Sheed running a slant. And all of this is going to be open because every one of these defenders is going to Alvin Kamara. And Derek Carr finally able to connect on a slant route. Why don't we play? Kamara goes in motion. They're communicating. They kind of see it coming. The Saints have run this play before in the past. You get tackle out there. You get tight end. Everything's looking like a screen to Alvin Kamara. 
and they find Rashid Sheed for a first down. Excellent play call. Good job from Derek Carr being able to complete the slant final. I'm not trying to bash him, but he has struggled completing and throwing the slant routes this season. So it's nice to see that he's, he was able to complete them uh, effectively on Sunday. Another awesome play call from Pete Carmichael. You get Taysom Hill kind of going out and then up. You get Juwan going out and then up. If this is main coverage, neither of these is an option. But I'm assuming Pete Carmichael was expecting zone. So why don't we play through it? This guy's job is to cover the flats. He sees these two guys running out routes and he's expecting one of them to stay right here. This guy's job is the deep third. His is the middle third. This guy's the other third. So they are in a cover three. He sees Taysom Hill. He's the outside guy. He's going to take Taysom Hill, and his back is going to be turned to the quarterback. Juwan Johnson then has a wide open seam because the safety is leaning towards this side of the field due to Derek Carr looking on this half of the field at the start of the play. And this guy's going to let Juwan go because he's expecting one of these guys to kind of just sit in the flat hook curl spot of the field. And none of them do. And by the time he realizes Juwan Johnson is an open receiver, it's already too late. Excellent, excellent play call from Pete Carmichael. An excellent execution from Derek Carr and just Juwan Johnson finally able to connect on a touchdown pass. As you can see, there's the looking to the left side of the field to start the play with a nice pump fake. Got that safety to move over there, leaving all of that space for Juwan Johnson to score. Again, like I said, I'd like I've been saying all day, Pete Carmichael, and again with another cooking play against his own defense. Derek Carr throws with anticipation again. Bound's going to go in motion. Shahid's going to kind of go over the tap, and At Perry's going to kind of cross over the middle. Derek Carr throws with anticipation, throws it to a spot as opposed to where he's at, and they're able to connect. You get play action again. You get motion in play action, something Pete Carmichael has been doing a lot of as of recently. And with all the zone the Giants have been playing, this is wide open. Carr throws with anticipation to A.T. Perry. Could have been a better throw, but he got it there, so that's all that matters. By better throw, I mean he could have gotten it higher and it kind of led him a little bit more. It was kind of low and a little bit behind him. That's I'm just nitpicking, but nice execution, nice play design for the Saints. This was one of the better runs the Saints had on the day. I don't know if he called this with the anticipation that this guy and the Giants were going to blitz, but if it was, good job. You're going to get all of these down blocks. Ruiz and McCoy are going to double team right here, and then, and then Ruiz is going to get off the double team and end up blocking this guy. He has him. They're double teaming there. And Alvin Kamara is going to cut left, lead Ruiz, and just Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties, but as I was saying, you get Lynn Bowden in motion. He's going to block, and all these guys are going to down block. Ruiz is going to double team this guy, get off the block. Get this guy, this guy's going to blitz. But since he's blitzing through the middle and not outside, Kamara is just going to run through. As you can see, you let the blitzer go. McCoy. Got off the double team, got to the linebacker, leaving a huge lane for Alvin Kamara to run through. And then the Saints started to be effective in the running game as they haven't been all season. You're going to see better angle of it during a double team. Dexter Lawrence, Ruiz, and McCoy gets the second level. And Alvin Kamara is just able to shoot through the lane. The Saints finally, finally were able to get a screen work and get Shahid in motion. Kamara is going to come across. I think the Giants sent five on this play and perfect time to call a screen if they are blitzing get Shahid in motion those guys are blitzing they sent one two three four five all of them blitzing from the middle so now there's no one to cover or help out the secondary with Alvin Kamara Hurst downfield blocking blocking from Juwan Johnson downfield excellent McCoy I won't say that's a good block, but I love the hustle from him getting downfield to help block for Alvin Kamara. Here's the other angle of it. So these guys are all going to blitz, leaving no one to help out with this Alvin Kamara screen. 
excellent time to call a screen and that McCoy block got AK an extra for you yards. So I'll take it. This is one's a little funny. I think Lynn Bowden probably should have got the ball here or Juwan Johnson, but I've seen this play in Madden before. So that that's why it's funny to me. Um, actually, I'll go undo. AK ends up getting the football. I've seen this play in Madden before. And um, it feels like on this on this drive, they are intentionally trying to get Alvin Kamara the ball. Um, ultimately, it should have gone to one of these two guys you get man coverage that if you if the, if you are expecting main coverage and you call this play those are the two routes you should want to throw to i mean again this is just one of the few times i thought Derek Carr probably should have thrown it somewhere else to throw it to Rashid out here and allow him to get up field he's probably getting to about the 25 to 20 yard line just due to how fast he is Derek Carr is about to throw to, like, he's already decided he's throwing to AK, which I'm not going to be mad about getting the football to Alvin Kamara. But you kind of have to let other things develop as well. Again, nice, clean pocket. Kind of no one really near him. These guys are near him, but um, this guy isn't getting the sack, and he's getting the ball before he can get to him. This should be the throw, though. And even if he doesn't see that, Juwan Johnson throw it out here juan johnson should be that throw ends up throwing to alvin Kamara. they only ended up getting about two yards i believe um this is one of the few plays where i thought okay maybe Derek carr should have thrown it somewhere else maybe he was, they were just trying to force feed alvin Kamara on this drive um yeah there's just a weird play right there this is a huge play from at perry third and 16 i believe just kind of running curls Jamal Williams in pass protection, clean pocket. He didn't really need to be there for pass protection. Man coverage. Carr throws with anticipation, throws it. The ball's already in the air as he's coming back. That is exactly when you want to be throwing the football. AT goes up and makes an excellent play and fights for that first down. And that's kind of what you want to see. That's nice to see out of your six round rookie pick who has shown some nice flashes over the past few weeks. Here's the offensive line protection. Excellent job. He got chipped from Foster Morrow, I believe. Pete, I don't know how Derek Carr got this ball out and didn't fumble. Carr was able to get it out like probably like 0.2 of a second before uh, the ball is loose. AT Perry goes up and makes a nice catch and fights for the first down. This is what I'm talking about when I was talking about Zach Bond and obvious passing situations. He's a little too small to have him as an every down guy. But he attacks, uses the hands, ducks, and rips, and gets a Tommy DeVito. Doesn't get the sack, but man, the Saints have been needing this on their defensive line for a long time. Swipes the hands, gets low, comes around. Even if he's getting beat or kind of blocked all the way downfield he's fast enough to come up and make a play gets the pressure misses the sack but Tano Passigno was able to clean it up and get the sack and as you can see from Zach Bond's uh, celebration he's like look what happens when you finally let me do what I did so well in college good things happen if you didn't know he had like 12 and a half sacks in college as an edge rusher but the Saints try to make him play like Pete Warner which is ridiculous I hope the Saints find a way to extend Zach Bond because the Saints desperately need like pass rushing depth. And he is clearly uh, a huge part of that right now. Another Zach Bond play we got here. We got three guys coming this way. Zach Bond's going to come across. I can't remember if Alante Blitz is on this play. Why don't we see what happens? Bond Blitzes. Again, just super quick. Both of them missed the sack, however. You don't want to see that. You want to see him start making more tackles and stuff. But you just kind of see the speed and the speed element that Saints have been missing in Zach Bond on the defensive line. Attacks the hands. Gets under and ducks under 79. Tano is attacking the middle. They both missed the sack, but Brian Brzee was there to clean it up. And I believe this is the last play we have. Zach Bond is going to get chipped get under the tackle and still almost get the sack this is something you, we have not seen from a defensive edge rusher on the saints like in a long time gets chipped 
Compared to everyone else, he is one, two yards behind everyone else. Uses his hands, gets under the block, the tackle's hands in the block, and almost gets the second. Yeah, he's on the ground, but man. And then this is the soft ass um, personal foul call that they called on Alante Taylor. But let's look at it from this view. Here's Zach Bond. Obvious passing situation. Third down, gets chipped. Able to get under, ends up actually just tripping at the end. And then here is the stupid weak call. That will do it for this week's film breakdown of the Saints and the Giants. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. We will be back tomorrow previewing the Saints and Rams Thursday night football game in LA. Make sure before you go, you hit that subscribe button. Check me out on social media if you haven't already. Links are in the description. And I will see you all next time.